Joining us now, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. She serves as a national advisory board member for the Biden-Harris campaign. And Senator Warren, I'll, I'll take what Mike was saying and, and send it your way because some of the things Donald Trump is talking about, monitoring of pregnancies, some of the things that have already been done, a six-week ban in Florida. It is way dangerous to be pregnant in Florida or to need any type mm -hmm. of health care in Florida if you are a woman starting today. Um, but I'll, I'll pose the question to you that I asked Andrew Weissman before. Mike starts talking about the craziness of, a, of pregnancies being monitored, and someone who supports Donald Trump, perhaps in this conversation, will say, oh, come on, he'll never do that. Come on, you guys are crazy. You're radical. You're just like over the top. I'm really tired of hearing all this Trump crazy stuff because it's never going to happen. Senator, your thoughts? So I look at it this way. This all started with Donald Trump. And if Donald Trump makes it back to the White House, it just multiplies and gets worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. You know, Donald Trump bragged about overturning Roe versus Wade. He is the one who put that yes. extremist Supreme Court in place. And he continues when he's in front of the right audience to brag about that. The rest of us are now living with wave mm -hmm. after wave of what happens when Roe goes away. The 10-year-old girl who is raped and can't get an abortion in the state where she lives. The women who have been partway through a miscarriage and can't receive the medical care that they need. The doctors, as you rightly pointed out, who are practicing defensive medicine. And now we just see the other pieces on the horizon that the extremists in the Trump party are calling for and starting to line up. Donald Trump wants to get reelected, and he understands that it is extremely unpopular what he is doing, that this is not what Americans want. And so he's hoping, as you showed in that interview, to walk away from it just a little until the election, mm -hmm. but at the same time keep encouraging his followers who are laying out the plans mm -hmm. to control women's lives. For me, this is one of the biggest contrasts between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the one who is responsible for getting rid of Roe versus Wade and all the calamitous effects from that. Joe Biden is the one who will lead us to make Roe versus Wade law of the land again so that women will be protected. They and their doctors will make decisions, not some politician. And Donald Trump has landed on the defense for all this. Well, all I did was help to return it to the states. Well, we're seeing now what that means when you return it to the states, state by state. Senator, um, I want to ask you, given what you just laid out there and given everything we've been talking about in this incredibly clarifying, crystallizing interview with Time magazine on abortion and all kinds of issues, there are many Democrats, there are many progressives frustrated for a variety of reasons with President Biden. You have a very large following, particularly among progressives. What would be your message to those who say, I don't like either of my choices, or I think Joe Biden is too old, or I'm just going to stay home or find a third party? What would be your message to your vast number of supporters going into the fall? You know, I do look at this as contrast. Uh, we are in a world now where we have two people who are running for president, both of whom have been president before. Uh, one of them is Donald Trump, two, two signature achievements in his four years as president. One was overturning Roe versus Wade, and the other was $2 trillion in tax cuts, mostly sucked up by millionaires, billionaires, and giant corporations. Who has Joe Biden been out there fighting for? Well, first, he's made very clear that as president, he has continued to fight to protect access to abortion. And by the way, I want to underscore that for a minute. He's not just saying, give me a house, give me a Senate, and we'll make Roe versus Wade law of the land. He's in that fight right now. 
U.S. military who are stationed in states that ban abortion, Joe Biden has made sure that they will still have access to reproductive care. The Veterans Administration has started expanding to abortion services, and Joe Biden is in the courts right now, making sure that at least we're making the argument to keep medication abortion available everywhere. But in addition to that, who is Joe Biden fighting for? Look at what he's done. $35 insulin cancels student loan debt for 4.3 million people across this country already. Uh, getting rid of junk fees. Uh, passing the biggest climate package in the history of the world. Paid for by a 15% minimum corporate tax on these giant corporations that have been paying nothing. In other words, somebody who's out there fighting every single day for hardworking people, for people who are just trying to build a more secure future for themselves. That's quite a contrast, and we need everybody in this fight for the future of America. And Senator, the Biden campaign certainly stressing that it was Trump appointed justices who did indeed overturn mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade. Um, I want to get your take on these campus protests we have that have consumed the news the last few days, Columbia University, a few schools out west, and many in the heartland as well. Your thoughts on the appropriateness of uh, what the administrations have done, whether what the police have done, and, you know, as someone who, as noted, is, is, has a lot of progressive and, uh, support, are you concerned that progressives, that young voters are, are going to, because of this issue, are going to break away from the president? Look, I am grateful to live in a country where people can raise their voices, where they can make them heard by their elected officials. It's crucial that any efforts at protest be peaceful and that no individuals be attacked. No one should feel threatened. This is what open dialogue is about. But we need to keep the focus on what's happening in the Middle East, and we need to bring real pressure to bear here. Look, it is time for a ceasefire. It is long past time for a ceasefire, but we need to be pushing on the parties to get that ceasefire. And we have got to open up for humanitarian aid. Yeah. Literally thousands of people are on the brink of starvation. We've got to get that humanitarian aid in. It's time to get these hostages back home. They have been held for months mm. and months and months. No one knows their medical condition. They've got to be brought back home. And then the biggest part, the United States must give a big shove to both parties to come to the negotiating table, work out a two-state solution where two peoples can live side by side with dignity, with self-respect, with self-determination. That's how we need to move forward. That is a big challenge. Senator Elizabeth Warren, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We're always so grateful to have you on. Thank you.